Hello Biology 202 students. Thanks for checking out the How to Be Successful PowerPoint. Too often students start their 202 labs thinking they are well prepared for the content of this course and then realize after a few weeks that their approach isn't working like they hoped. The information in this PowerPoint is here to help you find the resources you may need if you do find yourself in this position. Because 202 is focused on multiple body systems, Students not only struggle to memorize many new terms and definitions, identifying structures and dissections and microscopes, and applying lab activities to the human form, but they struggle synthesizing these concepts and understanding how all the systems work together. We hope you find these resources helpful so you perform well in this lab and set yourself up for a successful future career. First and foremost, you must spend some time familiarizing yourself with your BB Learn shell. Your TA has spent a lot of time building this shell and uploading resources for you. Although what you are seeing here is specific to my BB Learn shell, all TAs are required to have the same resources available for our students. Therefore, each TA may have a slightly different format. As you can see from this image, there is a space for important announcements, so check your BB Learn on a daily basis. We also have tips to help you perform better in this lab, a way to estimate your grade, and all pertinent course materials like the syllabus, review exercises, notebook checklist, annotated PowerPoints, and online lectures. We post our open lab schedule here as well as in the lab so you can come by to work with the models, microscopes, and dissections each week. Here is the main page for the Academic Success Center. If you are new to NAU or to anatomy and physiology, struggle with studying, or just need some extra support, this program is exceptionally helpful. They offer tutoring, supplemental instruction, and academic support. Last but not least is the Klein Library. This is a great place to work, use computers, print papers, or meet up with study groups. You will notice in this image that they offer individual and group study rooms, so you always have a quiet place to work, especially if your roommate's or living situation isn't conducive for studying. This image shows you what an example open lab schedule will look like. You will notice that we try to always have two or three graduate TAs in the lab at a time. We are not here to simply give you answers, rather we are here to clarify difficult topics, help you find structures on slides or dissections, and facilitate discussions so you can synthesize and apply this material in a more meaningful way. Please take out your How to Be Successful worksheet, which should be uploaded to your BB Learn shell. As we go through these online lectures, you will see questions and comments pop up in orange, just like this statement did here, and sometimes that color might vary. This is your key to pause the video because you may need to get out a worksheet, make a drawing, or think to yourself and answer a question. The point is for you to be an actively engaged learner and a participant of this lecture. It's easy to zone out sitting in front of the computer, so try to find a nice place that allows you to focus. I also recommend closing any social media sites you may have open right now and turn off all notifications so that dingers, bells, or buzzers don't distract your learning through this video. Another idea, especially if you have a hard time sitting still for long periods of time or get distracted easily, is to set an alarm and watch these videos in smaller chunks, maybe 20 to 30 minutes at a time. Get to know your learning style and understand that learning styles constantly change depending on the instructor you have, the class you are taking, the material you are studying, or even with what's happening in your life. Look at the basic skills section of that document. The more you can engage with the lab material, the better you will perform make flashcards, or print out blank diagrams or images of the slides and place them into plastic sheet protectors. Then, take a dry erase marker and label everything you need to know on that picture. You can even work with a partner or a small group and exchange these mini tests and grade each other's. Be sure to correct the tests and teach the other person as this will help you learn the material better. When you're done, wipe off the sheet protector, put in a different image, and, and do it again. You can also download all the PowerPoints and use them as study guides. All of the slides with diagrams and histology are animated with arrows. You can delete the vocabulary word and turn that slide into an animated quiz to test yourself. Most importantly, communicate any problems or challenges you're having in lab with your TA immediately. She or he is there to help you by directing you to resources on campus, offer study techniques and tips, and advise you with time management skills. It is extremely important that you show up to lab each week having watched these online lectures. These lectures are where you will get all of the information needed for your weekly tests and to complete the lab activities and drawings. Make sure you bring your required materials each week and be sure to study throughout the week in smaller chunks rather than cram in the information the hour before lab. 
We'll look over a sample weekly lab schedule on the next slide. We recommend that you study four to seven hours per week outside of lab in order to master these concepts. Some of you may need less time and some may need more. We all learn differently and we need to learn how we learn. If no one has ever talked with you about the type of learner you are, try clicking on the VARC link in the PowerPoint. And if you think you have good time management skills, click on the time management link and see if there are any other techniques you may try that have proven successful for other students. Studying this much for a lab can be frustrating but you will be learning a lot of vocabulary and challenging concepts each week, not to mention identifying all of these structures on slides, models, dissections, and images. Many students have the attitude that once the test and review are over in lab, they can just leave and they'll worry about studying later. This lab is already built into your schedule, so you should be looking at it as valuable study time. Take advantage of the fact that in your lab, you have access to an experienced master's or PhD student as a TA and a successful undergraduate lab assistant. You also have the ability to observe and study directly from all the items that will be on your weekly tests. There really should be no reason that you would schedule anything at the same time you have lab. Would you book a doctor's appointment during your work shift or your grandmother's birthday party? Probably not. So sit back, relax, and use this time to learn about all the wonderful concepts related to your field of study. I won't go over everything in this document, but notice two pieces of helpful information. First is Bloom's taxonomy. Bloom's taxonomy shows us a hierarchy of learning from lower level thinking skills like memorization, where most students spend their time studying, up to higher level thinking skills. You have to memorize terminology in this lab, but you should also be working towards higher level thinking skills like comparing and contrasting or synthesizing the functions of different body systems. Second, you will find a list of general questions that you should ask yourself for each activity below Bloom's taxonomy. For example, with every slide you look at in the lab, you should be asking yourself, can I identify what it is? Can I label every structure on that slide? And can I name the function of each of those structures? Do the same for models, dissections, or lab activities. This will help you be more successful, make you an active learner, and will make the time in lab go by much faster. Last is an example weekly lab schedule. What we have found over the years, especially in hybrid labs, because this approach to coursework is usually new for students and puts more responsibility on the learner, is that students could do a much better job of balancing all the tasks that a lab requires and organize their weeks with shorter, more focused study sessions rather than cramming it all into one day. Cram sessions are usually the norm for most college students, but the least effective and research shows that these types of study sessions are not good for long-term comprehension. We suggest breaking up your week so you don't get overwhelmed with the amount of work this lab requires. As you can see in this example, if you have lab on Wednesday, find smaller intervals of time to work on drawings, review exercises, practicing the material, and studying for the tests. This slide only shows page one of this document, but it is uploaded to your BB Learn shell and goes into more depth about each topic, so please review this before you begin the semester. We hope this PowerPoint was helpful and gives you some ideas for getting yourself set up for success. These study tips are not specific to Bio 202 Lab, and we hope that you can apply some of these ideas in other courses. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and best of luck to you this semester.